Hello and welcome to Countdown to Power with me, Graham Price. Never in the field of human endeavour was so much harm done to so many by somebody with so little hair. Yes, it's been entirely fair to say that Ian Duncan Smith's glowing, shiny bonds has been a shining, well, more of a reflecting light in the field of Tory performative cruelty for quite some time now. I've mentioned a few times that I've got a particular hatred for IDS. And I'm honoured to finally have the chance to tell you exactly what I think of him. From £38 breakfasts to 300,000 dead scroungers to the few horrible Conservative MPs that surpassed Duncan Smith for sheer Tory twattery. Mr Duncan Smith has been an MP for over 30 years and was party leader at one point. So he has a long, dishonest and decisively cruel history for us to take a little look at. And with a character as deplorable as him... It is really quite hard to know where to start, but the beginning is always the best place. So let's crack on and I'll share a few reasons why I think Sir Ian Duncan Smith is one of the nastiest of the lot right after this. Hey, sorry to interrupt, just a quick interjection. The best way to help the channel and beat the algorithms is to hit the like button, leave a comment when we're done and subscribe if you haven't already. If you really want to help the channel then hit the join button below or make a donation through PayPal or buy me a coffee. The links are in the description box. It's all very much appreciated indeed. Thank you. Ian Duncan Smith was born with a whole canteen of silver cutlery in his privileged gob in 1954 and was elected as MP for Chingford and Wood Green in 1992. Having utterly failed to lead his party, he was ousted after a confidence vote eventually, making him the first Conservative leader that had not led the party into a general election since Neville Chamberlain. Though Neville Chamberlain was definitely less of an absolute bastard than Ian Duncan Smith. He came up with universal credit, Ian Duncan Smith, not Neville Chamberlain, and claimed it was designed to simplify the benefits system. However, this was total bollocks, and it quickly became obvious that it was actually designed to make the welfare system cost less and take away the social safety net. This coupled with the sanctions system that the Tories didn't create, but they've certainly taken charge of a thousandfold, has caused poverty and destitution on a scale not seen since before the Second World War. While our tiny crime minister stands there and insists we've turned a corner and the plan is working, there are still continual stories of people dying in absolute poverty and isolation because of Ian Duncan Smith's welfare reform and universal credit. Latest YouGov polling shows that this winter, more than half of people on universal credit said they were unable to meet basic energy needs, unable to afford to feed themselves or their families, or unable to pay rent at various times throughout the winter. Two out of five people on universal credit have had to borrow money for basic essentials, and three out of five have claimed mistakes and delays in payment of universal credit have directly forced them into debt. The social trust lays the blame for the huge increase in the proliferation and use of food banks directly at the door of the DWP and Ian Duncan Smith's welfare reforms. There are many different figures of just how much money the Tories have wasted on it, not to mention the nearly £200 million overspend on the IT systems. IT systems that are still proven to be unfit for purpose, even now. In fact, the latest prediction is that it'll take another £900 million of spending and investment and another six years before universal credit can even be called fit for purpose. Bear in mind... This sorry mess started during the coalition government. By the time that six years is up, it will have taken almost two decades for a supposedly competent government to impose a system that they originally claimed was going to simplify things. Even Nadine fucking Dorries couldn't make that one up. It's less shocking these days than it used to be to hear the people actually elected to govern our country saying the most crazy, offensive and divisive things they can seemingly think of, or defending others that have. From Suella Braverman calling homelessness a lifestyle choice, to James cleverly labelling a whole constituency a shithole during PMQs, it's really never a surprise anymore to hear some Tory twat has said something else that makes your gut chair, is it? 
Mr. DS does sometimes say things that really do make you think he lives in some sort of weird Tory alternate dimension where words apparently have a totally different meaning though. When challenged about cuts to disability benefits that left some of our most disabled people up to £3,500 a year worse off, Mr. Duncan Smith somehow managed to think it was reasonable to reply by saying, In fairness, I believe this is the right way to go and will improve the loss of the worst off. In fairness to who? And how on earth does taking £3,500 away from someone leave them better off? When commenting on the proliferation of zero-hour contracts, Mr Duncan Smith said just a tiny proportion of the population are on zero-hour contracts. And of those people, most we're generally satisfied and enjoy the flexibility. Of the dreaded and seriously flawed work capability assessments that have caused misery and fear for literally millions of people since the Tories took office, Sir Ian Duncan Smith said, We haven't introduced this to hurt or harm disabled people. The purpose is to try and support disabled people. It's a funny way to support them, isn't it? When asked why his welfare reform and work bill removed the obligation of the government to address child poverty and changes the definition of absolute poverty, he replied by saying that it's about assessing the barriers people face to improving their own situation, whether that be problems of debt, relationship breakdown, poor education, drug addiction or something else. In other words, if you're poor, it's because you're stupid, single, or on drugs. Michael Gove's still married. He satisfies two of them requirements, doesn't he, actually? There's more, though. In 2015, the DWP, the Department for Woeful Poverty, released a series of adverts designed to address the rising concern amongst charities and other organisations about their wildly unfair poorly targeted and deliberately cruel sanctioned regime. The leaflet contained quotes from Zach and Sarah, two people who were claiming sickness benefits, but had not correctly jumped through every ridiculous hoop that Ian Duncan Smith had had built into his welfare reforms, and had therefore been sanctioned. Let's just be clear here. Our government is one of the only governments in Europe that has given itself the power to deliberately leave its own citizens without the means to sustain basic, essential human rights, such as being able to feed themselves or heat themselves or, you know, keep a roof over their head. Those sanctioned are entitled to a mandatory reconsideration, but the decision is not overturned in almost 75% of cases. The only other option they have is to appeal the decision at a tribunal, but a tribunal can take years and it's extremely stressful. Oh, and the Tories have seriously reduced the funding for people seeking to get legal advice about challenging their decisions and have made it far more difficult to get access to legal aid to see a free solicitor about a tribunal or get advice about a tribunal. Lovely that, isn't it? Zach and Sarah didn't mind their sanctions, though. In fact, they were quite pleased to have been left unable to afford basic essentials because the Department for Work and Pensions had decided to punish them. In fact, in coming days, Ian Duncan Smith actually said, as far as he was aware, 75% of people who were sanctioned actually end up thanking the Job Centre. He even said some had been in touch and thanked him personally because it had helped them focus. The problem is... Zach and Sarah didn't exist, and Ian Duncan Smith is a fucking liar. It was realised almost immediately. The Tories seem to think that ordinary people don't have access to Google to, like, fact-check their propaganda, don't they? Debbie Abrams, the Shadow Minister for the DWP, managed to get over 50,000 signatures in a day calling for Ian Duncan Smith to resign after the fake adverts campaign. Obviously he didn't though, he just kept telling lies about it in true, in true Tory twat fashion. And, oh, and he said this, 
but mostly because he thinks you and me are fucking stupid. It's just one little thing. What it seems happened, and what we are investigating at the moment, is somebody along the way put up what was essentially meant to be an example of the kind of advice we give. And it ended up going out as a quote, which was quite peculiar and quite wrong. We've immediately taken it down and stopped it. This sort of thing doesn't really happen. and It just happened this one time. They really do think we're fucking stupid, don't they? The voting record of Sir Ian Duncan Smith. I don't know what to expect here, but it's going to be about as pleasant as a wasp in a tent at Glastonbury, isn't it? He's been an MP for over three decades in the nastiest party in history. You won't be surprised to find he's voted for tuition fees and he voted against the voting age being lowered. He's voted against anything that would change parliamentary process to make it so the Tories don't have such an advantage, obviously. He's also a landlord that has consistently voted for all the nastiest landlord racketeering and protection schemes the Tories have dreamt up too. What a shocker. He's voted for more privatisation of the NHS and Royal Mail, but there's not really anything surprising there, is there? That's the type of thing they all vote for. There's never anything surprising in the voting records, is there? The Tories have been voting through absolutely useless, corrupt, incompetent or undemocratic legislature for years. The media just don't bother to report it. I think there's barely a sane person in the UK that could honestly look at the the voting records of all the Tories and not be shocked at the sheer appalling nastiness of it all. A man like Bessie in Swanage voted Tory. She didn't realise she was voting for people who were going to force her grandson to leave university with 40 grand's worth of debt. Or when, like, Elsie in Dudley voted for that nice conservative chap with his big blue rosette who knocked on the door. She probably didn't realise she was voting for someone who'd voted, like, 29 times to reduce fucking pensions and things. It's probably some poor bloke with COPD somewhere that votes Tory because he watches GB News and believes everything that Jacob Rees-Mogg says. Doesn't realise he's probably voting for someone who thinks he should pay to see his GP. I honestly believe that there are a couple of million people who go out there and vote for the Tories because they've got no fucking idea who they are and what they are and what they want to take away from us. And now I've gone off on a rant, but I don't even care because I've had to spend days thinking about Ian Duncan Smith and his fucking face, his smug fucking face and his £38 fucking breakfast bullshit. Absolute bastard. I hate Ian Duncan Smith. Anyway. 43,000 civilians died during the Blitz in the Second World War in Britain. Almost half of them were in London, but there were loads of other places that suffered greatly as well. Since the Tories took office in 2010 and up to the beginning of the pandemic, there were 300,000 excess deaths registered in the UK. Some right-wing sources will argue that it's a bit less, and some left-wing sources will argue that it's a bit more. So, you know, we'll go in the middle for the sake of impartiality. But that still means the austerity imposed by George Osborne and the welfare reforms imposed by Sir Ian Duncan Smith have killed six times as many British people as Hitler managed to. Have a think about that. You can interpret the figures in different ways, obviously. The Tories are masters at reinterpreting figures that they don't like, aren't they? But even with the best mathematical massaging that their backroom bastards can muster, they can't deny that there are many thousands of people dead that wouldn't be dead if every social service and NHS service hadn't been slashed to the bone by years of Tory austerity and welfare reform. There's some other horrific figures too. 82 people have been sanctioned and then left to die without the means to support themselves since 2012 and were found dead during the period of being sanctioned. 35 of them were people with registered mental health conditions. Two of them ended up having starvation as the cause of death on their death certificates. Disability Rights UK did an extensive research programme and uncovered shocking evidence that over 600 people had committed suicide after having the benefits. Their only means 
of being able to survive, remember, withdrawn for often nonsensical or downright incompetent reasons. In 2015, a research company working for the Scottish Government found that over 2,400 people had died within weeks of one of the DWP's dreaded work capability assessments that had found them fit to work. That was nearly 10 years ago. Do you think Ian Duncan Smith was shocked by that and made efforts to address it? No, he didn't do that. What he and his party have done instead is change definitions and hide figures and basically make it more difficult to get any accurate information so these kinds of reports don't come out anymore. Uh, And anyway, when asked about it, Mr Duncan Smith said he simply doesn't recognise these figures and suspects their sources are activists within the Labour Party. Yes, say Ian. I'm sure the Scottish Government and a leading UK disability charity are just Labour activists. Fuck's sake. Thank you for watching if you've gotten this far. I'm going to wrap it up because I've banged on long enough and I, I don't want to think about Ian Duncan Smith ever again. He hasn't said he's stepping down yet, but he's not guaranteed to keep his seat. Very few Tory seats are definitely safe, even some like his. Let's hope this is the last time we ever have to mention him again on this channel, until election night at least. I'm working very hard writing stuff for next week when I'm intending to do a different video every day. So if you haven't subscribed yet, get on it, lad. There's loads more to come. If you want to support the channel a bit further, there are links to PayPal, Patreon and the Buy Me A Coffee page in the description box below. And of course, there's the join button for memberships. It's all very, very much appreciated. And, you know, believe it or not, some of my videos get demonetized. Mm. I don't care much about that. But what I do care about is seeing as many Tories crying in a sports hall at 3am as possible on election night. That's all that matters really at this point. Reaching the conclusion of our countdown to power. Being about five big, ugly, middle-aged women gabbing in the street for hours. It's like the laundress in prisoner cell block H out there.